All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we have a Toronto Raptors video. They got blessed with some really, really good news this week. The Boston Celtics on Wednesday in Boston, they're going to be without Jalen Brown. And then on Thursday, back to back in Philadelphia, they're going to be without runner up MVP, Mr. Joel Embiid. So you got two really good news right there like that is actually phenomenal the the raptors might go three and oh this week to go nine and five through their first 14 games so before we get into today's video be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button we're about 80 subscribers away from 9,000 subs let's try and get this video to 50 likes that would be awesome to really help out that algorithm help get this video to new people so we can hit 9,000 subs by the end of November. Uh, really good news. I just bought a phone microphone, so hopefully a couple more days of, uh, of these clips here. But let's get into this video. I want to talk about a couple of things for this week ahead, kind of like a week preview video. Um, I didn't do my weekly close yesterday. I'm still a little bit sick, but the, the Raptors, as I mentioned, they have a three-game stretch here in Boston, in Philly, and then back home against Detroit. Given the way they've been playing at home, I guess that's not even really out of the equation, or I guess that's not really like a, a guaranteed win. Detroit is 1-8. They only lost by six points to the Brooklyn Nets just a couple of nights ago on Friday. I just, I don't think you can count out any team in the NBA this season, like literally all 30 teams in the NBA are at least competitive. I know Detroit and Houston, they both have one win apiece, but they've had some really competitive games. And by the end of the season, even by the halfway point of the season, those teams will be looking much better than they do right now. So for Toronto, this is a huge week because you finally have your number one player, Pascal Siakam, back. And if you look at how he played against Brooklyn, he only played 25 minutes but 15 points, 4 rebounds, relatively efficient shooting of 5 of 12, 1 of 3 from downtown. And then he also threw in a steal and two blocks. Toronto just barely got over 100 points that game. The offense definitely hit a stall point in the third quarter. If it wasn't for that third quarter, the Raptors, honestly, since they had the lead going into halftime, they might probably win that basketball game. And also, like, they'd score more than 103. So Pascal being back in the starting lineup already has done some wonders. It's being led by Freddie. Now, the the Raptors have an issue right now because you have Pascal back. So yeah, it's a good sign or it's good news because you got your best player on the team back. Um, the bad news is someone's got to get booted from the lineup. I don't know who it's going to be. It Oh man, it's to me it's looking either like Precious Achua or Svi. I don't know who Nick Nurse would go with. The starters are going to be Fred, Gary, OG, Scotty Barnes, and Pascal. I think that's what the starting lineup's going to be. That's what it was the other night. Those are the five best players. I think that Nick Nurse will just continue to deploy that lineup. So the Raptors have a really good problem considering Yuta Watanabe is coming back. It's just players are going to get left out because you need to play Delano Banton right now. He's playing really solid. You should play and probably will play Kem Birch. You don't, I, I, it's what's tough about Precious Achua is I don't really want to get Precious off this, off the rotation entirely because not only is he coming off a pretty, really solid game against Brooklyn, he went 13 and 8 for. 6 of 11 from a field, 1 of 2 from downtown, even threw in a 3, and then threw in a steal and a block. So I don't want to leave Precious on the out of the rotation because he also started the season with like three straight triple doubles. Uh, but Svi, you also don't want to do it to him because although he had a bad game against Brooklyn, when Scotty Barnes was out the last two games prior, Svi really, really came through in the starting lineup and put up like 15 points per game averaging in the starting lineup so you don't want to do that Chris Boucher Chris Boucher probably will be the guy who gets left off it Chris Boucher is a really tough case because he's playing really bad this season he's in Nick Nurse's doghouse 5.2 points per game 3.6 rebounds per game 
uh, the stats aren't there. The eye test isn't really there. The energy never really appears to be there. So my guess is it's Chris Boucher. The issue is it's a contract year. I mean, oh man, Chris Boucher, this really sucks because he had such a promising year last year. I've seen, I've heard some trade hypotheticals with like him being packaged in a deal for Goron. I'm, a, I'm a, all with that. Chris Boucher is not really living up to expectations right now. It is only been 10, 10 or 11 games, but still, oh man, he's just not playing well. I think Yuta Watanabe, even though he hasn't played this season, I think Nick Nurse is just going to give him the nod over Chris. So that might be the end of Chris Boucher in the rotation at the moment. Ken Birch, hopefully he's not knocked out because there is zero reason Ken Birch should be knocked out of that rotation. He is Mr. Consistent, good old reliable. He'll give you probably eight points per game. He'll give you probably five rebounds per game, give or take one or two in both those categories. He'll even hand you some assists, and he'll hand you a block a game too. So Ken Birch, if it wasn't for Scotty Barnes just playing so well, Gary Trent Jr. being such a breakout year of the year candidate, I would say, hey, let's throw Ken Birch back in that starting lineup. But for right now, I, I do want to see what Scotty Barnes can do in the starting lineup. Also, considering, ah, man, no Jayla Brown for Boston really sucks. We'll see how Toronto can do in the back-to-back on the road. Considering both teams are going to be without a star player, that's really good news. I mean, (laughs) you look at Philadelphia, they're still without Ben Simmons. That's not going to be solved by, what is it, Thursday night. So Nick Nurse has a couple of days to figure out the rotations, figure out the lineups. But, man, this is looking tasty now. I I made my video earlier today. I was saying... Oh, this this week might be a little bit a little challenging because you're on the road playing Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and a red hot Sixers team with Joel Embiid being led by him. And yeah, today's news: you got Jalen Brown out for a couple of games. You got Joel Embiid out for a couple of games. So that's huge news, no matter how or who Nick Nurse decides to go with in the starting rotation and in the bench rotation. I have faith in it that they're going to be able to win both of those games. I'll obviously post a pregame preview video of both of those two uh, the day of, most likely, maybe even the day before tomorrow. So be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button. Once again, let's try and hit 50 likes on today's video. That would be awesome. That's it for me, guys. Peace out.